Okay, we're going to talk today about how to download and install the Atari Stella emulator. It's an emulator for 2600 and it's available for just about any operating system. So to uh, get it, just go, go to your browser, search for Stella and Atari. You should find them on GitHub. Just click on that and uh, there you are. Now there's a lot of information about the uh, Stella itself, the people that uh, developed it, the history and all that. Uh, it's a donation site, so if you can, you know, give a few bucks to these guys. So after your donation, uh, go to the uh, anywhere else here. You can learn about the people that are doing it. You can see some screenshots. Here's the people, uh, documentation, how to use it. But that's what we're going to cover today. But here's where we're going to take a look at. That's the revisions, the release page. Now, what's really nice about this, you see there's a 64-bit binary at the top and a 32. They're both EXEs. Then you have a zip file with both of those files included in it. But then you have them for all these different operating systems that you can download. It works on any one of them. So uh, choose the one you want and do the usual click on it and uh, download it. And once it's finished downloading, we can go ahead and do the install. So I already have an Atari directory and I have different emulators for different systems. But uh, just make one for the 2600 or for, for Stellas for that matter. And uh, go ahead and do your download. So once the download's complete, uh, there it is there, the latest version. You notice I've been doing this for a number of years. Depending upon what you install, uh, you should be able to just uh, double click on it to uh, launch the installer. So all I have to do is uh, double click on it and the installer will come up. And you get a prompt something like this. And this is welcome to the setup wizard. And you go here and you choose wherever you want to install it at. Simple. And the usual stuff here, once you click on that, uh, you can do a shortcut, whatever you want, name it, uh, whatever you want to do. Click on it and say install, and off it goes to be installed. It only takes a second or two. And in my case, uh, I installed it to uh, my 2600 directory. And there it is, 6.12, install today, open that up, and you'll see the contents of the directory. Now, before we get into configuring it, uh, we're going to go out and do something else. We're going to go find some games to play. And that's uh, done uh, via ROMs, read-only memory. One thing I'd like to point out, I put my ROMs directory somewhere else, outside of the installation directory, so that it can be accessed no matter what version of the emulator I'm at. Well, yeah, as you can see, I have a lot of ROMs, but uh, where do you get all those at? Well, there's one that's the master place for all Atari ROMs. And that would be Atari Age website. And as you can see here, it has ROMs for 2600, 5200, all the gaming systems, not the computer systems, but the gaming systems uh, that Atari created back in the day. So if we go down here, we can search for different ROMs. If we slide down here, you can see you can type in the title there. Now you notice here that I've uh, typed in Asteroids, and I found uh, quite a few different versions of it, uh, made by different people, different versions, different years. But what's important to note is that you can take a look at uh, different aspects of an individual ROM. And you can check the rarity, for example. One is very common. Uh, different ones are very uncommon. Uh, you can come over here to the index on the left to uh, do that. Uh, the next thing you can look at is the country column. And then next to that is the type of uh, TV, that's uh, NTSC or PAL. And starting with the cart uh, page, you can actually see an image of the cart. If it's, a, if it's there, somebody has taken a picture of the cartridge, uh, you can go back and then look at the manual. If you click on that, if it has a manual, somebody has translated it to and put it into uh, text format. And then you can go over here to the box and see the actual box. Just like the cartridge in the manual, uh, the box has some really great graphics comparable to what we're experiencing nowadays. But if we go over here to the ROM column, you see that it has a Pac-Man symbol there. It's available for download. So you simply download it to that ROM directory we talked about. And uh, that's all it takes. And eventually you'll end up with a ROM directory that has as many games or as many things you want in it uh, to play with. Now, one thing I want to mention before we go any further, if you look at the emulator itself and its directory in there and you compare it to your actual physical hard drive, you'll notice that there's some things that are in bin format or zip format. Wherever you download it from, bin format's fine, but if it does it in zip format, you see there's a file inside there, another bin file. 
Well, the emulator doesn't care. You will see here, if we look over here, you'll see both the zip file, the, the bin file, and the internal file is still inside of the zip. So you don't have to extract it if you don't want to. Uh, you can just go ahead and just list your zips there. However, if you decide to extract it, you can give it a better, longer name, like I have with most of these. So let's go see how to actually set it up and run these. So you click on the icon that created, uh, and it'll launch your emulator. But it probably won't show your ROM directory here. We're going to have to go to the options and talk about uh, how to configure stuff. So at the bottom of the interface, you'll see the options. You click here, and there's a lot of options available. So we're going to go through them one by one. Now, most of them can be just run by default. There's video in case you wanted to change settings there. Just review the page and see if there's anything that uh, you want to change. It should auto detect what version of uh, graphics you uh, are going to have on your system. In my case, it was Direct3D. You notice here I have Zoom set to 400. You may want to change that. Well, once you get it running, uh, we can work on that a little bit. Same with your uh, emulation speed and all that. For the most part, you can leave the stuff just the way it is. Now, the game settings, if we go back uh, to uh, one level and we go back to the top, you can see the game properties. There are so many settings here that are for advanced users. The average user does not have to worry about this, but if you're a person who's really in the emulation or different operating systems and require different things, uh, you can do that. For most part, leave it at auto detect. And if you're having a problem with, like, let's say, the TV type or, or whatever, uh, you may want to change the format there. Uh, it's just available if you need it. And after you change your TV or stereo or whatever sounds, the next one you want to go to is this mini menu here and go to console. This doesn't really affect much there, but here's the difficulty level. Uh, I would keep it at novice. Uh, there's no reason to play these games at experts, especially since uh, they don't normally have a save. So anyways, there's other things with ports and keyboard. It's just a lot of stuff you can configure depending upon your own situation uh, and how you want to play. The last thing on this submenu is cartridge. And if you're already clicked on a cartridge to load, it'll tell you all about it in details, which is interesting, but not necessarily useful. So we click on OK. We head off to the next menu. You know, I'm not going to go through the rest of these. I'm going to go instead to how to change your path for your ROMs. Because you notice here there's an audit path, and that's how to audit your ROMs. But that's not going to change where it looks for your ROMs. It's only for this function. What you have to do is go back uh, into your settings under user interface and go here. And you'll notice that there's a ROM path there. It's so hard to find it if you don't know where to look. Go here, navigate to whatever that directory you created for your ROMs, and go ahead and click on it. And once you have it, uh, let me get there, 2600, my ROM directory, OK, choose. And now when you reboot or whatever, that's where it will find your ROMs. And just to demonstrate that, I'm going to close it, the emulator down, open it back up, and you'll see I'm right where I want it to be. Now, to save time, I'm not going to go into all these other options for audio and snapshots and all that. Go ahead and here, take a look at it, enable the functions that you want to have. Uh, but mainly, you want to just set up your TV screen and your location of your ROMs. Uh, you don't need to know all the different things about uh, every single one of these options to enjoy the game. Now, when you first launch the game, it may come up center of the screen. I guess maybe off center or whatever. So the only thing we're going to talk about now is what happens when you actually launch a game, what it looks like, what size it is, and things like that. So let me go back to find the asteroids here. Uh, again, you can filter up here to find uh, any particular game you want to have. But once you have your bin file, simply double click on it. You don't have to say go or anything like that at the bottom. You just double click on it, and it will launch the game. You see here, this is a very big window. It's uh, bigger than my screen. It's not quite what I want to have. So I can go back into the options and change that to a smaller size. Remember where we had it set for 400%. So I'm going to put it to 350, and it usually comes out pretty good. So to do that, let's go into Stella and uh, hit Escape to get to the options. And uh, let's go down here to Options. and We'll get video, and you notice here uh, different options, but there's 400. So I'm going to say uh, 350, and then close that, double click, 
sure enough, it's a better size. Now you notice I had to move it, so let's go back into options real quick, okay? We're going to go back here. And we're going to go down here. We've already got it at 350 and all that. But there's a center window option. So that uh, we say, OK, we'll close that. Uh, it's now going to center the window. Sure enough, there it is uh, centered nice in your screen. If we close it and reopen it and run it again, sure enough, it automatically puts it in the middle of your screen. Now let's talk about uh, selecting games. Uh, every cartridge came with multiple versions of the same game, maybe one player, two player, uh, different versions. Asteroids came up with 33 different versions. If you press the F1 key, you'll see here, that's the version number on the left incrementing, different version of Asteroids. And you have to go to the manual for each cartridge to see what, uh, what it is. Now we're in the two player mode, uh, which is 34 through 66. Uh, versions of uh, this particular cartridge. So once you've experimented a little bit and found out which game is what, the, all you need to do to start the game is then press the F2 key and it'll launch. And here it is uh, running. Now there are other function keys, okay, that you can hit to do different things. Uh, there's color mode and black and white mode. You see it pop up at the bottom down there, depending upon which function key. Uh, there are keys that change your difficulty level for each player. So you can press the F4 and F5 keys to do that. If you press one, you see left difficulty is now uh, at A level uh, versus B level, and the same with right difficulties. But some of the most important keys are your F9, F10, and F11 keys. The F9 key will save your current game. The F10 will change it to a different slot, like slot 2 of 10, and then the F11 key will restore whatever your current slot is. Then finally, your F12 key will take a screenshot of your current game wherever you're at. Uh, so you can post it to Reddit or something. So there's your setup of the uh, Stella emulator for the 2600. If you have a joystick, it should automatically detect it. And you can use a joystick uh, for your controls for hours of gaming fun. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want more of the same, Subscribe to the Atari Geek. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.